Hi, bro. Currently sat in a pool, a little pool. Just trying to cool down because it's really hot. And I know you wouldn't have liked the heat. Just think it's um, a, some time just to catch up, really. Went back to work on Monday after COVID. Um, feeling much better. Took us all by surprise, really, considering I've had both jabs. And I was still quite poorly. So if I didn't have the jabs, then I don't know what state I would have been in, to be fair. So I'm glad I had them at my age. So I found it hard to breathe uh, as it was without knowing that I had, uh, you know, I had that extra protection. John changed the rooms around yesterday for Kerry, John and um, Colin. So Kerry's now in the uh, bigger front bedroom. Um, Eli's got his own room now, the other front, smaller bedroom, and Malachi, Shay and Corbin are in the back bedroom, which was your room. And I'm sure that you're going to be looking over them anyway. You probably already know. Work's been a bit tough. It's been a bit tiring for me. It's been really, really hot, so again, the heat hasn't helped with everything. And then, obviously, what happened last Thursday. Still pretty sensitive, really, for me. Every day is a different day. Every day I think about you in a different way. Um, remember you in, in ways and... I just wish that I just took that opportunity to spend more time with you as we were really starting to build our relationship up even stronger as brother and sister. We had uh, a lot of things that we agreed on and we stuck with each other on. There were some things we might not have seen eye to eye but we still respected each other's opinions. It's weird knowing that you're not here. Um, every day it's that realisation. And today is yours and Kerry's wedding anniversary as well. Which I will admit I did, I did forget even though it's been on my calendar and I do know it's coming up. It's just today I just went into work and, and just got through the day. Because I felt that's just what I needed to do, concentrate on the day that I have in front of me and work with the children that I've got. And they're superstars, they really are. They really keep me going. They've missed me a lot, not being there. Uh, so losing you and then having COVID and then last Thursday with the two girls. It's been tough. It's been very tough. But I've got to stay strong. It helps my mindset to stay strong too. I just know that with everything that happened then, you know, you would have been there. I know that. You would have come up. I know that. You would have helped Lucy with, with her self-harming. I know that. And you would have tried to speak to Kate as well. I know that. <clears throat> but this isn't, you know, it's all part of family life, isn't it? It's not going to be the last thing that ever happens. There's going to be lots of other things happening too. I think if as a person I try to stay strong, then that's that's the job done, isn't it, really? Um, begging my child not to take her own life is hard but I did it because that's my job that's what I wanted to do that's what I felt I needed to do whether it's changed anything I don't know 
and make mistakes. I'm still having the odd cigarette just to help me to relax and not get anxious over things. Because <clears throat> so when I get anxious, then I get scared. My heart rate goes up and I feel like I'm suffocating. I can't. I can't really talk to anybody. I've got a counsellor that I can speak to from my work, so I know that I can phone that at any point. But I just feel at the moment I would be wasting their time because... I'm not doing too bad, considering, considering everything. <clears throat> Archie, no, Archie's digging. Life's got to go on, hasn't it? You've still got to move forward through the days. So I've got a half day tomorrow and then it's the summer holidays. The difference being this time that on, on the weeks off that I've got, um, I can actually do things, I can go out, whereas with Covid I stayed in for the full 10 days, apart from crossing the road on Thursday night to get Kate in. I'm going to start doing your car on Friday, starting having a bit of a clear out. Uh, John's going to help me with that, so we'll, we'll get that done. And then... It's wants to to carry what she wants to do with with your car, really. It's just things are still moving forward as much as I want to put the brakes on and as much as I keep seeing you laying there gone, um those thoughts aren't doing me any good. Just keeps reminding me of how quick it happened, how sudden, and how life can be taken away when you least expect it really, really quickly. I miss you, Rich. If I can say anything to anybody, it would be make the most of your time with your family, reconnect, connect be with them, or learn with them, appreciate them, because nobody knows how long they've got. My sister in 2005, when she died, she wasn't a smoker. Um, she had the occasional glass of wine, and um, she ended up dying with cervical cancer. So there's no saying of, of what you do in your life, whether that's gonna be the cause of of what happens to you at the end. It's it's not for you to decide. It's not for you to change or control. It just happens. And I know one day I'm not going to be here. I know one day my eyes are going to close and that's going to be it. And I don't know when. And that's the scary part. The good part about that is I really hope that I get to see all you lot again. I get to see you and mum and dad and Angie. For eternity, hopefully. But for now, I'm here, I'm grounded, and I'm focusing on the family that I've got around me. Rest in peace, sweetheart. I love you.